Hello viewers. In previous chapter, we talk about uh, the rotation in classical mechanics and in quantum mechanics. As we uh, talked about, it's uh, one part of infinitesimal rotation uh, to evaluate the rotation operator. Today we will discuss about uh, what if the rotation about an axis, uh, say about z axis, not of uh, an, not of an infinitesimal angle, but just uh, of a finite angle. Uh, so that will be our problem um, today finite rotation so to evaluate uh, for the finite rotation uh, we assume say uh, about an uh, about z axis the rotation is taking place and uh, ro rotational angle is phi and we consider that this uh, uh, rotation uh, rotation phi is uh, composed of an infinitesimal rotation angles uh, so that's how we can tackle this problem and uh, the rotation operator rz phi now can be written as like this okay and del phi and uh, more precisely we can say that it can also be written as and from our previous uh, video we know that uh, this r operator for the del phi is 1 minus eta del phi over h cut lz angular momentum orbital moment, angular momentum component in z direction and now uh, we know that uh, from here del phi is equals to phi by n substitute this here so rz phi for the finite rotation is minus i phi by minus eta eta phi n h cut lz n times okay and uh, uh, this n limit goes from n tends to infinity on expanding uh, this expansion uh, up to the limit n we came to know that uh, this is nothing but a e minus i phi lz by h squared this is nothing but exponential expansion okay so from here uh, to generalize this we can say uh, to generalize this generalize. we can say that r n phi for any axis r n phi say e to the power minus i phi by h cut and dot L. okay I hope you got it <clears throat> now uh, now the thing is that now we were evaluating this uh, uh, rota rotation operator for the spinless particle for the uh, particle which has spin includes spin then we can uh, say uh, particle including spin including spin we can say that r n phi is nothing but e to the power minus i phi by h cut n dot j where j comprises both orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum we know that Hamiltonian for a particle Hamiltonian for a particle under a central potential is p square by 2m plus v commutes with commutes with orbital angular momentum it commutes with orbital angular momentum so uh, this must commutes with the rotational operator which is h comma minus i phi and dot l by h so this must be equals to 0 
Due to this symmetry of space isotropy or rotation invariance, the orbital angular momentum L is conserved. So in this case, particle moving under center potential, particle moving under this central potential, the orbital angular momentum is a constant of motion in this case. Orbital angular momentum is constant of motion. <clears throat> now exploring some properties of a rotation operator, properties of a rotation operator. As we said uh, that in, uh, in our first lecture that these rotation operators are non-abelian uh, non uh, groups. So let me show you how they are. First thing that multiplication of any uh, two rotation operator say Rn1 dot Rn2 gives us the third rotation operator say Rn3 okay under the rotation operator. Second one is that they follows associative property. This is a closer property by the way closer property. Third, uh, second thing is that they follows associative property, associative property, which is Rn1 dot Rn2 dot Rn3 equals to Rn1 dot Rn2 dot Rn3. So they follow. <coughs> The associative property. Third one is that the identity operator. Identity operator in rotation is simply uh, corresponds to no rotation. Okay, so i dot r n equals to r n dot i. Identity operator corresponds to identity operator corresponds to no rotation last property which is the property of inverse and uh, this that for every rotation operator there exist a inverse rotation operator rn inverse and uh, this is equals to identity operator no oh, identity rotation operator so far so good but how they are abelian so as we know that uh, two different rotation operator uh, about different axis uh, can't commute with each other but, uh, with each other, but uh, they can commute with the, uh, the rotation operator about the same axis okay so using that property rn phi rn2 phi can't be equal to rn2 phi rn1 phi as they can't commute so just basically using that property so they can't compute uh, so they are not commutative not commutative so comprising all these things from five identities we came to know that uh, rotation operators are uh, non abelian groups okay uh, since we know since we know uh, J is Hermitian operator so uh, J is a Hermitian operator we know it's from uh, previous knowledge so uh, if J is a Hermitian operator then essentially rotation operator be like R and dagger phi is equals to E B minus oh sorry not I this time I phi n dot J by H cut. So they must follow that. Now uh, this equation will come when this is equals to R n inverse R n inverse of phi or R n of minus phi 
so from here we came to know that rn dagger phi is equals to rn inverse of phi uh, which shows us that uh, which shows us that rotation operator is unitary operator is unitary operator 